Hi, this is Emily Lakdawalla from the Planetary Society, and I wanted to share with you today a really cool little image processing trick that can make your pictures of Mars look so much better. We're looking right now at a photo of Curiosity sitting on the surface of Mars. It's actually a mosaic of many images that were captured on Sol 613 as the rover was sitting on the surface gazing at the part of the outcrop that it's about to be drilling. You can see that the image uh, was originally made up of about 75 individual tiles, and I've sort of laid them out here so that you can see how all the tiles come together. I think this mosaic is so cool that the team shot it with the head in two different positions, so you can choose if you want to to assemble it with the rover facing you, facing the viewer, or you can choose to assemble it with the rover facing the outcrop. Now, there are lots of ways to automatically assemble a mosaic. That's not what I'm going to talk about here. I wanted to show you a few different versions of this mosaic and point out a way that many of them could be made better. So here are uh, a variety of different takes on the mosaic. Um, here's one uh, that was made by Thomas Apare. Here's one that was made by Olivier de Gorsac. Here's one that was made by James Sorensen. And here's one that was made by Doug Ellison. Now the reason, one of the reasons that I like this one so much is because Doug has corrected a problem in the original images that the other processors did not correct. And that has to do with something you can see, this glare coming off of the RTG on the rover's back end. You can see it in all of these other mosaics. It gives the rover a sense that it has some kind of motion blur, that it's driving fast toward us. All of that glare comes from a single frame in the mosaic. It's this one right here. And you can see that that blur is coming off of the RTG. It's a, it's a set of vertical lines that has streaked across the image. And this has to do with something called interline uh, transfer smear. It has to do with the way that the image, image, once it's on the camera, gets taken off the camera and put into the electronics. If there are some pixels that are quite bright, there can be sort of a leak of charge into the transfer register where the, the all of the uh, data gets stacked before it gets taken off with a chip and sent into storage. What it is isn't really important. What we're looking at is a smear that's happening across the surface and causing some, some problems with the quality of the image. But it's actually not very hard to correct. So let's take this image and go into Photoshop and correct it. So here I have the image in Photoshop um, and you can see the vertical smearing. The way we, it would, it would be nice if we could just tell Photoshop to correct it out, but unfortunately Photoshop doesn't know what, what of the pixel variation in this image is caused by smear or anything else. And you can't just paint it out because it's really kind of covering the whole image. So we're going to have to find a way to correct it, to actually subtract out the smear. Um, and it's actually not very hard. What I'm going to do is to select the whole image, and I'm going to copy it and paste it into a new file. And flatten the image here so we're dealing with just a single layer image. Now I want to create a model of this smear that I can subtract from the rest from the original photo. And the way to do that is to average out all of the pixels vertically so that we get sort of a a trend all the way across the image for where all those bright pixels are. The way to do that is to resize the image into an image that has the same width as the original but a height of only one pixel. This will effectively average out the values of all of the pixels in the image vertically. Okay, so now we have a single pixel image that contains all of the variation um, that was in all of the, the pixels vertically across the original image. Now we'll resize it again to its original size. And there we go. Now we have a model of the smear all across the image that we can use to subtract it out from the original. So we're going to select the whole image, we'll copy it, and we'll paste it. All right, now I would like to just subtract this so I can set it to it's blending mode from normal. I'll change it to subtract. And the result is not very pretty because the problem is that the image that I'm subtracting, the, the pixel values are too high. I'm subtracting out too much of the data. And if we turn it off, you can see that the smearing in the original image is not nearly as strong 
as the pixel values are in the image that I'm subtracting from it. So I've got to knock it down somehow. Well, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make an adjustment layer here and connect it to just this layer that I'm trying to subtract. The first that I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the darkest pixels in my smeared image um, do not need to be corrected at all. And so the way I can do that is by setting its histogram so that all of the so that the darkest pixels in the image that I'm subtracting are actually black. So I do that like this. And now all the darkest pixels that I'm subtracting are actually black. And this is looking a lot better, but it's still much streakier than it needs to be. In particular, this place that's the brightest is too bright. I'm subtracting too much and making the resulting image too dark. So the way I fix that is that I'm going to set the output levels of the image that I'm subtracting to be much lower. So this reduces the pixel values um, and hopefully it will stop overcorrecting my original image for the, for the amount of smear that it has. So let's just slide these output levels down. Oops, I forgot. I've got to change this from blue to a greener blue. Here we go. Let's try that again. There, that looks much better. And you can see that as I reduce the output levels of the layer that I'm subtracting, when overcorrecting less and less until I think that that looks pretty good. Okay, so if I zoom into my image, you can see that it's not perfect. There's still a little bit of vertical smear left, but it's almost indistinguishable from the rest of the background, and this is quite good enough to do a mosaic. Another thing I might do is you'll notice that by correcting the smear up here, I've actually introduced a little bit of vertical streaking in other locations, like here on the high gain antenna. So I might, um, if I were really, if I really cared about this a lot, I might futz with how um, much of it is being applied on the high gain antenna. But really, this is good enough for me, and it's good enough to include in the mosaic. And once you've done this correction on this particular frame, you can go ahead and build your mosaic and make a beautiful image like the one that Doug has here. Thanks. This has been Emily Lakdawalla for the Planetary Society.